It was just past 10 p.m. I remembered looking at my watch. I was getting impatient. A few more minutes, and if uh, nobody shows, we'll just go. Unless one of you wants to pay for the seat. Uh, let's just wait a couple more minutes. In this rain, I'm always reminded of my... Ah, there we go. Where are you headed? One star. Come stand in the rain then. Get in. Finally. He had carefully wrapped himself in a dark blue raincoat, and he'd pulled the broad brim of his hat all the way down to his eyebrows. It was as if he intended to insulate himself against the outside world, and even the people therein. He got lucky. We were about to leave. That's a big parcel we got there. You want me to put it in the trunk? I will hold it. Yeah, okay. Whenever the light in the car or an outside light permitted, I'd always steal a glance at his face. It was pale. He had a small but straight nose and his languid eyelids looked all but closed. A deep wrinkle at each side of his lip bespoke a strong will, as though he'd been carved out of stone. At times, he would wet his lips with the tip of his tongue. Then he would rejoin his ruminations. Mm, I hope the roads don't get flooded. Nah, no, it'll be fine. Oh, this city is exhausting. What? What happened? Sorry to wake you up, but looks like we're gonna have to stay for the night. What are you talking about? There's a flood. God damn it, I mean, where the hell are we? Khonsar. So what, we're staying here for the night? I doubt that you can find a suitable place in which to spend the night. If you do not have any acquaintance around here, why don't you come and spend the night at my house? Uh, thank you, but I don't want to be an inconvenience. Nothing of that kind. I don't know you and I don't wish to know you. There is no favor involved. Recently I built myself a new room and since then my old room is empty. I thought it would be more comfortable than the inn. His simple but unceremonious words affected me and without any hesitation I began to follow him. He pulled out a flashlight from his pocket and turned it on. A column of bright light appeared before us. Everything was still. Still enough to penetrate one's being. This must be a pretty town. <laughs> what? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Well, I preferred Khonsar to all of the cities that I've visited in Iran. Not so much because it has plenty of fields and orchids, but because it has retained much of its ancient charm. It has retained this medieval atmosphere in its alleyways. Among these mud brick walls, underneath those tall trees, the whole area is secluded, a factor that assures its poetic flavor. And it is away from the newspapers, cars, airplanes, and the trains which plagued this century. Especially cars, along with their noisy horns and the dust they raise. They carry the conductor's mentality to the tiniest hamlets of the land. It pushes all these new, albeit half-baked thoughts, screwed opinions and stupid limitations right into every conceivable hole in the wall. Have you had supper? Um, yes. Yes, in the city a while ago. <sighs> you can smell the ground. This is it. His house was near the mountains, 
I remember walking into a small room that had a, a rollaway bed, a table, and two armchairs. He lit up a kerosene lamp. Then he unwrapped the parcel he had brought with him. It contained a, a red lampshade which he placed right on top of the light. Would you like to come to my private room? This way. We passed through a labyrinthine dark corridor. It had an arched ceiling and a floor covered with dark red cloth. Then he opened another door. We entered a room that did not seem to have any openings to the outside world, except of course through the doors that we came through. Devoid of any geometrical configurations, the concave inner walls, the ceiling, the floor were covered with deep red velvet. I feel a little lightheaded. Have a seat. He motioned for me to rest on the chair by the table. On the table was a was a glass and a pitcher of milk. Astounded, I looked around me thinking that this man must not be of sound mind and that this room must be something, something akin to a torture chamber. The walls were the color of blood, I thought, so as to camouflage the blood of his victims. What do you think of my room? Um, I think no one can hear you from in here. I always wanted to design and build a place of my own. To this end, I turned all my wealth into hard cash and I came here and had this room built, according to all of my own specifications. I brought all these velvet curtains with me, and I've personally attended to every detail in this room. The only thing that I had forgotten was this red lampshade. I sent the design and size to Tehran. They made me one. And today I went and picked it up. That's why I was traveling. As for food, I've just placed myself on a milk diet, since I can just drink it sitting or laying down. I'm spared all the trouble of preparing meals. Want some? Uh, no, thank you. Like I said, I've already had my supper. A glass of milk will do you good. Drink. He poured the rest of the milk into his glass and began to sip it. Every now and then he would wet his lips with the tip of his tongue. His lips would glisten and his eyelids would seem almost closed. It was as if he was searching for some distant memories. Under the red light, his pale, young face, his short but straight nose and his meaty lips were lustful. A large dark vein stood out on his broad forehead and his long brown hair covered his shoulders. I cannot sit in a room with a window behind me. I don't like the light. It makes my thoughts disappear. In the sunlight, everything appears frivolous and ordinary, whereas fear and darkness are the real sources of beauty. Take the cat, for instance. During the day, he is familiar enough. But at night, his eyes glow, his coat shines and his movements become so mysterious. Light awakens all beings and makes them alert. They become cautious. It is at night and in the darkness that all ordinary things develop a mystery. Then latent and lost fears awaken. One can sleep in the dark, yet hear things. One is awake. Real life begins then. Basic instincts and silly whims are left behind. One enters a spiritual dimension. He recalls things he had never known or even imagined. I need this darkness, this red light. I was perplexed. How was I supposed to react to all of this? The line at the side of his lip had hardened and the dark vein had reappeared. Whenever he talked, his nostrils flared, and under the red light, his pale face looked tired and melancholy, quite at odds with the face I had seen in the car. Uh, I monopolized the conversation. Listen, we all talk about ourselves. We're the only truth that ever existed, right? 
so we talk about ourselves quite involuntarily, actually. Even when we're supposed to express our feelings and observations in someone else's words. See, I think the most difficult thing is to express oneself in exactly the terms one should. A disturbing feeling, a feeling arising from misfortune, it has always placed itself between me and happiness. I have vowed to take my life the moment I run out of money or the moment that I feel a need to return to society. This is the first night that I will sleep here, in my own room. I am that lucky man whose every earnest wish is fulfilled. I could never have imagined this state. Yet right now, I am a lucky man. <laughs> you, you're traveling, you'd better go and get some sleep. He picked up the light and accompanied me as far as the end of the hallway. He showed me the room in which we had first arrived. I remember it being just past midnight. I took in the fresh air and felt that I'd just left a cold and sickly spot. The stars twinkled in the night sky. The next day I woke up at about 10. To say goodbye to my host, I went into the corridor, and like an infidel approaching a temple, I gently tapped on the door. My host was still in his pink pajamas. He was lying in the fetal position and his hands covered his face. I approached him and shook him by the shoulder, but he'd become petrified in this position. Had he, had he, had he run out of money as he had said? Or, or was it the loneliness he had so eloquently praised? Had he for that last night wished to have someone with him? Or, or perhaps he was a lucky man. And that maybe, maybe he'd wanted to keep his good luck to himself. And that this place could have very well been his ideal room. <laughs>